Good morning guys. Sorry I look like a ragamuffin. <laughs> I literally just woke up. I don't know what it is, but I slept until 9 and I never sleep in. So obviously I needed the sleep. But today we are going to go through a full day of eating for you guys. You can kind of see a little glimpse into my intuitive eating cut that I am doing for my wedding. So yeah, if you guys are interested in that, then stay here. But first, I need to clean my kitchen because holy heck, it is a disaster. <sighs> and I cannot film a full day of eating for you guys if my kitchen looks like a disaster. Sorry, I can't. So, that's what I'm gonna do first and then we're gonna jump into our first meal. Pretty late breakfast, but what can you do? Sometimes you sleep in, life happens, and yeah, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> there we go. All right, so meal number one is just my breakfast. I'm gonna start off with some Stone Age oats, just one third of a cup of that, uh, one tablespoon of this nut and seed butter that I got from Costco, it's so good. Almonds, cashews, um, chia seeds, Brazil nuts, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, and hazelnuts, so lots of good uh, nuts in there, and it's a really good source of healthy fat and protein. I have been really liking these chia squeezers from Mama Chia. I also get these from Costco. Um, these are really good as like a syrup on your protein pancakes that I usually have. But since I have no eggs, I can't make protein pancakes. So I'm gonna make a PB&J uh, oatmeal bowl. So I just put my oats with some water in the microwave for a minute. And then I'm gonna add about one tablespoon of this nut and seed butter just on top, and then I'm gonna add this whole packet of Mama Chia, Chia Squeeze, to make delicious PB&J um, oats. And I thought I should mention also, this oatmeal has flaxseed, which if you're struggling with hormone imbalances, is really good to help balance hormones in women. And if you don't like the taste of flax seeds, I recommend getting ground flax seed like this and putting it in your smoothies. It has really helped me and is a good source of omega 3s and fat. So, yeah. So, that will be meal number one. I will catch you guys later for my lunch got back from my 5k run. Man, was it slippery out. Do not advise that people who are running when it's slippery like that, but we did it and we got through it somehow, I don't know, without falling. And uh, now I'm just gonna take my post cardio kind of snack. I'm gonna take one scoop of my chocolate Arbon powder protein shake. This is rice and pea protein and if you guys are looking for a new uh, pea and rice protein that tastes absolutely delicious. I do sell Arbon now so you can use my code down below in the description bar. But yeah, so I'm going to take one scoop of that. That's about half a serving of this protein powder and then I'm also going to take my uh, after workout supplement. This is the After Workout Phytosport by Arbonne as well, and it has B12 and magnesium to help replenish your stores after a workout. And it also has vitamin C. Whenever you work out, you kind of uh, increase oxidation within your body. So it's very important to su uh, supplement with some kind of uh, vitamin C, whether it be fruit or a supplement like this to uh, help your immune system because it will be down after your workout. So, yeah, that is what I'm gonna have right now and then I'm gonna go do some school and then I'll catch you guys in a bit for lunch. Okay, bye. Alrighty guys, I'm just coming back into the kitchen for lunch. I've been reading my integrative health textbook until this point, so. Time to take a little break and have a snack. So, uh, for my lunch today, I think I'm gonna make my trusted healthy taco bowl because I'm all about the taco bowls. But I think today I'm gonna use my protein source, 
Um, for I'm gonna use chicken as my protein source. <laughs> blah blah blah. Words. Um, so I am just going to heat up some of my butternut squash spirals on the stove as well as some purple cabbage and make it that nice and crispy to act kind of like a tortilla chip would be in a taco salad. So I'm gonna start doing that and yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, so just started off with some of this olive spray oil just to keep down the amount of fat that I'm putting in. I love these spray oils because then I can save my fat sources for like things that I enjoy like avocado and nut butter because that stuff is life. <laughs> and then I'm gonna cut up my purple cabbage and my sweet potato spirals and put it in there. All right guys, so I'm just putting this stuff onto the pan. We're gonna make it nice and crispy. I might add some pink Himalayan salt to help aid with the crispiness. Like I said before, butternut squash kind of acts as like the tortilla chip. So I wanna make it a little crunchy and delicious. But I thought like I'd take this time right now while I'm waiting for this stuff to heat up to kind of talk about how I'm doing my wedding cut and how it's been going so far. So I started lowering my calories probably I would say mid-January after like all the Christmas festi festivities <laughs> uh, kind of ended because it's really hard and, well at least it was hard for me to stay on track and I didn't want to stay on track during Christmas like food is such an important thing that brings people together and your family and it's just I don't want to be that person that be like no I can't have your uh, gluten-free treats that you made me because I'm trying to stay healthy. You know, like they took the effort to make them gluten-free, so I'm gonna gobble them all up, and I sure did. So last year I was bulking for an entire year to help gain some muscle mass and size and also help gain some strength for my powerlifting meet. And now that I am coming closer to my wedding, I kinda wanna dial it in a little bit more because at the end of my cut or at the end of my bulk rather I was starting to feel like sluggish and not as athletic as I usually do just cuz your girl did zero cardio because when I do cardio the weight kind of sheds off automatically and I know that is something to be grateful for but when you're bulking and you have to do zero cardio I kind of feel like a slug not gonna lie like a very fluffy slug <laughs> but so that was kind of <clears throat> the plan for the past year so now that I'm getting closer to my wedding I want to look a little more lean I don't want to get to a point where I look competition lean I just want to look more athletic and show off that muscle that I have gained so to do that like I said in January I started to cut down my calories I went back to macro counting for a bit to help uh, with the transition because I knew if I didn't have something to guide myself off of that I would not stay accountable and it was hard the first little bit cutting down my carbs and my fat because for so long I was eating 250 grams of carbs and having to stuff my face to get that every day which is just I don't <laughs> I don't love doing that but what I had to do to gain weight and gain muscle, so it was kind of a necessary evil, I guess. But yeah, it's nice getting to this place where I can actually just eat food and not feel full all the time. Like crazy, over full, you know? So like I said, cut down to my maintenance in January, and then the start of February, I started getting a little more, um, more active towards an actual cut. So for the first few weeks of February, I continued with macro counting and all was going good. And then my period, maybe TMI for some people, but my period always, the week before, I feel ravenous and go crazy. And that was last week. And I 
kind of gone into this crazy like binge cycle. I've never experienced that before where my mind was just like programmed to think about food because I constantly was, you know, looking at my macros and counting them and uh, it just wasn't, wasn't a healthy standard that I want to set as somebody that likes to live their life more holistically and, and balanced. And to me, um, doing so, like constantly thinking of food is not healthy. So I kind of took last week as a reminder as to why I don't count macros, pretty much. And um, yes, they are probably the most effective way to diet. I hate that word, but diet and lose weight while eating um, kind of flexibly. You know, like you can have a donut as long as it meets your macros, right? But to me, it's more important to view food view food as energy and and health, right? So when I look at this kind of food, I instantly know I'm gonna be feeling a lot more energetic. And if if I overeat on vegetables, then whatever, I'm gonna feel great. But if I overeat on food that I'm just using to fill up my macros, no, I don't feel that great afterwards. So this is where I kind of had come to a different kind of way to look at this cut. So I will be uh, intuitively eating and that's what I kind of was doing already during my bulk on and off. Like I would use macros whenever I felt like I was under eating to get me back on track so I can kind of view the portions that I should be having or how much I should be having each day to uh, fill up those macros as close as possible. Because like I said, I'm not trying to get bikini lean. I don't have like a competition or anything. This is just for myself to look and feel great. And yeah, so I'm not taking it as you know cutting edge as like measuring out your food and being super crazy about it because I don't have to I'm just living my life and I encourage other people to do that too because we are just living our lives you don't need to be crazy to get to your goals so for this cut my kind of plan is to eat intuitively based off of the macros that I have been giving myself uh, the past or the start of February. So I kind of already have gotten into the routine of eating the necessary amount that I have to, just kind of viewing the the portion sizing from what I did when I was mac or counting macros. So now I'm kind of basing my food intake off of that. And whenever I get to a point where I feel like I'm stalling, I will probably resume macros for a week to, you know, hone back in on what I should be working on and then I'll go back to intuitive eating after that because I just find it is way more healthier on my mental state, healthier on my relationship with food. So I just want to encourage people that, you know, you don't have to be insane to meet a goal. Just eating healthy and living your best life is enough, right? So. That is kind of what I've been going off of. I also have sat down and written out um, what I kind of want my healthy plan to look like and how I want my nutrition plan to look like while I'm intuitively eating. Of course, sometimes I'm going to be craving ice cream and that's and sure my intuition will be saying have that ice cream, but in reality I probably need some other nutrient that also comes in that ice cream to help for, fulfill myself. So I set some boundaries for myself and maybe I'll go get that book and kind of read them out for you. Yeah, I'll be right back, one second. All right, so I kind of like laid it out like so. So to start, I said under never. This is things that I'll never do or try to never do to help make sure that I have a successful cut while intuitively eating. So I will never binge again. And 
Yes, that sounds crazy, but by saying it under the never column, I'm making it a priority to not do that. Again, I never let myself fall into that rut again because it was honestly, it's scary because you feel like you're never gonna get out of it. But luckily, luckily girl did and we're all good, but. And another never is I never want to give up on my health and give it a lesser value. So I don't ever want to get to the point where I'm not eating enough vegetables in a day, not hitting my protein, and I'm not living the life that gives me the most energy to fulfill my workouts, fulfill my life, and to build relationships with people. So that's done. And under, then I went onto my section always, things that I'll always make sure that I do day to day to make sure that I am eating healthy and intuitively and helping my cut be successful. So I plan to always eat a few servings of vegetables with every meal, especially lunch and dinner. I always want to drink at least two liters of water a day. Usually I get that, but some days not the case. I always want to get enough protein, so I kind of plan around 20 to 30 grams of protein approximately. I kind of know what that kind of looks like because I do the macro counting, but if you don't, then it is the palm of your hand. Or a little bit more so just just a guide and then I always want to have three main meals a day and then a few snacks throughout the day yeah and then restricted um, these are things that I only want to restrict restrict to a day or a few days a week um, and they're not going to become daily habits that I incorporate into my eating plan so I want to eat one treat meal a week if needed. If I don't feel like I need it, then why would I, you know, go outside of my cut and eat it, you know? So if I'm not feeling that I absolutely need to have, well, here are my restricted ice cream, froyo, nachos, pizza, a full chocolate bar, and cheese. And since I'm lactose intolerant, I probably shouldn't have cheese, but yeah, those are the things that I can overindulge in and I did last week so I want to be mindful and only incorporate those into my my eating routine if need be so yeah and then my unrestricted this is the things that I want to be eating on the daily so I want to eat green leafy vegetables a variety of colorful vegetables lean protein such as chicken turkey fish game and eggs and beans and all the other things that are healthy and have protein in them. Uh, I want to have one to two servings of fruit such as oranges, apples, and bananas because they are high in sugar. I do want to kind of be mindful of how many I am eating in a day uh, just to make sure that I am still in a calorie deficit throughout my cut. Um, I want a few servings of starchy vegetables like butternut squash, uh, uh, spaghetti squash <laughs> and um, sweet potato and potatoes I want to eat high fiber berries one to two servings a day um, that kind of incorporates with the one to two servings of fruits but uh, if I could eat more berries that are higher in fiber and antioxidants then I will um, I get one sweet healthy treat a day. So this could be my protein waffles, protein mug cake, or protein muffins, uh, rice cakes with nut butter. Something sweet that I, I like to have mostly in the evening. Sometimes I wake up and I want something sweet, but I only want to do it once a day because I usually incorporate some chocolate chips in there and that's an extra carb and fat. So I want to be mindful of how many times I'm eating that kind of stuff in a day. Um, I also want to eat oatmeal before a workout. Today I ate oatmeal for breakfast because I didn't have eggs. Usually I have egg, egg whites with some asparagus on the side or a protein waffle. Um, chocolate, like I said before, I only want to have one to two tablespoons a day, but I don't want to restrict it because I love chocolate, guys, and I don't ever feel like you should have to restrict it. Cacao is actually healthy for you. It has antioxidants, so if you're eating like a reasonable amount, eat the chocolate. That's what I'm saying. Okay, nut butter, two tablespoons, 
tablespoons a day at max. Um, just because I want to be mindful of my fat intake during the day, I kind of try to, when I was counting my macros and trying to get a range of how many uh, macros uh, or how many grams of fat, it was around 40 to 50. So within that range. Dairy free products to substitute with cheese. I usually use the dairy, Daya dairy free shreds, and that is awesome. And honestly, I usually use that for most things. And then cru cruciferous vegetables, one to two servings a day at least. So your asparagus, your broccoli, all those uh, really high fiber greens that provide you with health. So that is kind of a little outlook of how I want to intuitively eat each day. Um, and it's kind of, the thing about intuitively eating on a cut is that you will feel hungry and you should be feeling hungry if you're in a calorie deficit in order to um, promote fat loss. So I do feel hungry throughout the day and it's not always fun to uh, have the willpower to overcome that you intuitively should be eating but you know you're in a calorie deficit when you are feeling a little hungry at times so it kind of comes down to willpower there but also to help aid with um, my calorie deficit I've started to incorporate a little bit more cardio into my exercise regime so I have started running two to three times a week and then I have one leg day that I lift heavy for a few exercises and then I do kind of like a plyometric circuit training kind of workout. I've also been preparing for fem sports, so that's once a week. And so that gives me um, three or yeah, two to three low intensity steady state cardio sessions and then some higher intensity kind of hit kind of a circuit training style cardio so that is kind of the plan for my intuitive eating uh, cut and if you guys are interested in it and have any questions feel free to comment down below or to email me or DM me on Instagram I love to help people so yeah all right this is the finished product guys doesn't it look great I added uh, one quarter of an avocado and some salsa on top as long, along with my butter nut squash and purple cabbage that I prepared in the pan for you guys and then my chicken on top. So I'm going to eat this. I have a glass of water before just to keep me full. I always encourage people to have water before their meal because it helps um, not only with digestion of your food but also to help your belly feel more full and then in turn you'll be more satiated and not be wanting dessert afterwards. So this is gonna be my snack and then I'm gonna go back to doing more school. All right, catch you guys at meal number three. Okay guys, I'm just about to head to the gym. I've just finished up uh, editing a video and so that will be going up on today. But so in one shaker for the gym, I have two scoops of my protein chocolate argon powder, also pea and rice protein for a mid-workout snack. I also have my Prepare and Endure BCAs from Argon. Uh, oops, wrong one. <gasps> Disaster! It's this one right here. Just BCAs. Come on. There we go for mid-workout as well. I'm like the queen of shakers. I have, I also bring my water bottle too because like I chug liquids, especially liquids that are flavored, so <laughs> yeah. So on my way to the gym, I'm gonna be snacking on one of these uh, Smart for Life gluten-free protein bars. This is caramel almond and oh my God, guys, these are the best. They literally taste like a delicious treat. Delicious treat, oh my god. Words are hard. Delicious treat. They taste like um, a Rice Krispie, but with chocolate on top. So like pretty damn good and high protein and some fast acting carbs in there to help your girl get through her workout. So that's what I'm gonna be snacking on mid-workout and then 
I guess we'll see you guys later for dinner. Yay! Just a post-workout meal here. This is my uh, about a cup of egg whites and about two cups of broccoli on the side. I seasoned this with dill and I'm pink Himalayan salt. And this one just had a vegetable blend mix uh, seasoning and then pink Himalayan salt and pepper. So yeah, I'm just gonna gobble that up. And then my last meal will be um, a high protein mug cake. Pretty pumped for that. All right, last meal of the day. Just made this protein mug cake. I will have the recipe up on my YouTube. I have a separate video for it, so I'll link it maybe up here, maybe in the description box, wherever you can find it. <clears throat> but I hope you guys enjoyed this full day of eating. And yeah, if you liked it, give it a like. And if you could, subscribe. It helps my channel out a lot. Anyways, guys, I love you. I appreciate you, and I'll talk to you later. And now I'm gonna go stuff my face with this. Because chocolate is love. <laughs> Alright, bye.